One of the generational wounds that you and I are here to heal and transmute is the wound of not being seen for who we truly are. In today's daily channel message, I want to share with you how this wound really was brought to the surface for me in a quantum healing hypnosis session earlier in the week, and then how I started to notice it in a lot of the conversations I had with friends over the weekend. And then I'll end with three tips to follow as you start to become aware if this resonates with you of this wound within your own lineage, so you can start being the one to heal it. And as always, we shall end with a pull from the Starseed Oracle deck. So let's dive right in. Welcome, Starseeds, Lightworkers, New Earth Leaders. I am Kaylee O'Keefe, founder of Soul Excellence Ventures, channeler of Atlas of the Pleiades. And I'm super excited to share what's been coming up as I sat in a really beautiful, very supportive and loving QHHT session with JK Ultra on Friday. And I'll probably do a whole video about everything that I'm taking from that experience. But one of the most, I wouldn't say surprising things, but one of the things that came through in the session in communication with my higher self was this deeper purpose in my life to heal a long running pattern in my family's lineage of people really struggling on the inside because they're not being seen for who they truly are. And so This generational trauma of a group of people in my family who have big hearts, who are very intuitive, who are sincere, who are thoughtful, who are loving. And yet when we get together and yet the whole communication in the family for generations has nothing to do with really honoring those facts about people in the family. Instead, the conversations, and I know you can relate to this, are very much about the the outputs, the externals. So conversations around job titles, on houses, on really the external facade. And there's very little appreciation and noticing of the little things that makes makes each person super, super unique. And so as I was connecting to my higher self in this session, that came through so strongly, like this deep love and a bit of grief of just how many people in this broader family group struggle with not being acknowledged for who they really are. Of course, I've, I've experienced a lot of that in my life too, where you begin to notice at a very early age that those more character traits, the expressions of consciousness that you are go unnoticed. And what does get noticed are the report card grades, are the trophies, are the awards. And I think some of that is starting to change in the culture for the better, but in so many people's different lineage, there still is this that striver energy and you only get to receive love and attention if you are proving yourself out in the world. Caveat, I love that we are out here exploring and experimenting out in the world. We're learning, we're testing, we're trying, we're growing, we're building. These are super powerful things, but anyone who's really followed their passion knows It's not often about the outcome. It is about the journey. And to be on the journey, you have to really love the qualities about yourself that are aligned to the journey. So if you think of a scientist, the qualities aligned to a scientist are those of observation, persistence, diligence, rationality. Imagine being praised for those quality traits versus just the one in every 10 discoveries that actually have an impact. And so This came up very strongly in my session to sit with, to notice, and to acknowledge how through my own life choices and the work that I'm doing, I am healing this. And then over the weekend, I heard many conversations among my friend groups of the same pattern at play. So a friend who's starting to seek out therapeutic help for the first time and is being sort of mocked and dismissed by her mom for doing so, who's a little bit afraid of what's going to surface in those sessions. And so that friend is being essentially kind of mocked for choosing a healing path for that desire to heal more and to love more. I connected with another friend over the weekend who ended a relationship she was in because her partner got very jealous that she was saying, I love you to her friends. For her partner, that was a no-no because her philosophy was your love is finite. There is a limit. You can't be going around saying, I love you to everyone, because what will that mean about your love for me? That means you have less love to give me. 
And so here is someone who's open their heart so much after so much rejection and abandonment throughout her life has gotten to a place where she can love unconditionally. She can love her friends and her partners and her child and, and the world. And that's now being mocked and used against her in this relationship. So as I sat with those examples over the weekend, I thought to myself that so many of us are kind of grappling, grappling with this issue that we are here to um, break curses, to heal generational wounds, and by doing so, to live more embodied, to live more fully in our power here on the planet. So while I know you're here because you're a starseed, you're a light worker, you're a new earth leader, you are aware and connected to the rise of consciousness on the planet, you may have your connections to various star beings like I do with the Pleiadians, you're starting to become aware of the grander picture of all that is in the universe. And you're also being called to drop more into your human. And that can be hard sometimes because the human part of us that wants to be seen for just like the intangibles, gets pushed, pushed aside often for the human that just gets to be seen for the outputs, for the things that others can see. But I want you to know that others can see and more importantly, feel these aspects of you that you truly love and you continue to cultivate. So I want to share three things that you can do to start to honor this journey for yourself, this healing journey of loving all parts of yourself, bringing them together and allowing your actually here's the real trick, allowing yourself to be seen for who you truly are. Even me putting out this video is a bit more of an example of me allowing myself to be seen for who I truly am. Someone who is comfortable of having an idea instantly and taking two notes and, and coming to you live unedited in this video. This is who I am. It's what I love about myself. It's not yet respected or appreciated necessarily by some people in my life, but in the new communities that I'm stepping into, it's absolutely valued. And more importantly, I'm allowing myself to value it. So for you, the three things you can do if this message resonates with you is, of course, number one, to love those parts of your character that others may not fully appreciate just yet. So take some time and allow yourself daily to express gratitude for those parts of you that are patient, that are kind, that are feisty, that are aggressive when you need to be. Whatever aspects of yourself that need a little bit more love, allow yourself to notice them about yourself first before anyone else does. No one else can see it if you don't see it first. The second thing is, is to build relationships based on these new character traits or values or things that you're really allowing yourself to express. So for example, I mean, here's a really basic example. One of the things that I love about myself, it's not really a character trait, but just is my love of music, of rhythm, of beat, of dancing. Like I, the world of sound has always in, has been my passion. Even just listening to the radio as a third grader, as part of my alarm clock. Like I love sound. I love voice. I love music. I like rhythm. I like beat. And so allowing myself to, uh, to follow that more when you can imagine, since I'm not the best at it, right? It's not a real career choice. It's not really respected in my, where I come from. But even going to a women's drumming circle in my local area allowed me to access that part of myself. And I'll make new friends in a community that's willing to step into a circle, hold space for each other, and also just have fun and not take things so seriously. So it's a, a bit of a more practical example, but how you start to build new relationships when you start honoring new parts of yourself that you really want to honor. And then lastly, it's important to acknowledge these virtues in other people. One of the resources that I love that's out in the world is the Virtues Project that went around the world and looked across all cultures, religions, countries, and came up with a list. I think it's expanded now, but a core list of 100 virtues or universal character traits that people around the world admire in themselves and in their communities. So these are, these are things like excellence even things like cleanliness and orderliness, things like justice, humanity, loyalty. These character traits are the things we have to really start noticing, particularly among young children. We may notice them for when they're able to stack their blocks finally in a tower. We'll then clap and congratulate, 
But along the way, we get to notice and call out their determination, their resilience, their creativity, whatever it is. So we begin to allow for generations of people that really respect those intangible qualities that allow them to do anything as the generations pass, as the world changes. Because if all of a sudden you're being praised just for a specific skill that maybe gets automated away, you are left with a bit of an identity crisis. But if you can feel into the beauty of what makes you you, while of course always staying open and connected to universal wisdom, which allows you moment by moment to really recreate and reincarnate who you are in each and every moment. It's, it's hard because our brains are wired if we've done things a certain way for a long time. But as we all know with neuroplasticity and just the work that we do here in the world of human consciousness, we can make quantum leaps if we choose to. So the third piece of advice in summary is to notice these things in others, to tell your friends that you admire their loyalty, their ingenuity, whatever it may be. This is essential for all of us to do, to start to usher in a new style of communication where we respect and honor people for being vulnerable, for using their gifts and talents in a new way. You know, I felt that in a conversation with my friend yesterday where I felt like we were able to express to each other the impact we're having on one another and the intangibles that we're bringing into the experience. So noticing each other's gifts, but they're really character gifts, like the ingenuity that I see in her, the creativity and initiative that she sees in me. These are just beautiful things for us to be sharing and expressing with people in our lives, um, just as much as we would thank them for doing a, a specific act for us. So in short, <laughs> we are here to allow ourselves to be seen for who we are. But we have to break out of our old personality, the one that was built up probably on old scaffolding, scaffolding that we didn't even choose to create. We were just born into, and it was built around us and for us, and at the time perceived to be in our best interest at a very young age. But if you're on this path now, you're starting to become aware that, whew, maybe I built my lie around a certain set of myths and beliefs, not even about the world, but about myself, that I'm going to pause and no longer choose to believe so tightly so I can begin to open up and see and let light in into the truth of who I really am. Of course, to be then for yourself, the way, the truth, and the light, that connection to source consciousness. So let us end today with our Starseed Oracle pull for Monday, whatever it is, October 14th <laughs> or whatever date past, present, future, you're watching this. Let us pick a card that supports us on this journey of allowing ourselves to be seen for who we truly are and allowing that gift for others in our life as well. For some reason, the top card is just wanting to be pulled. <laughs> All right. We haven't pulled this one on the channel yet. I don't know if I ever have, to be honest. The blue flame spontaneous awakening, activation, integration time. So the blue flame, let's learn a little bit more about it to wrap up our time together today. Please do like this video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. As you can see, I love being engaged with those of you that choose to make yourselves known in the comment section. Join us in Awakening 2 channel. We had two amazing registrants over the weekend. So momentum is picking up in the course. Really excited for those that join by the end of October to participate in two live experiences in November. So if you've been thinking about it, now really is the best time to join, to have those interactions with me and like-minded individuals. All right, this is a card of awakening and energetic upgrades. Perhaps you're going through a period of spontaneous awakening, receiving visions and having experiences that are out of the ordinary. <laughs> Raise your hand. In the West, little is known about the process of spontaneous awakening, and it can feel very scary when we're going through it alone. Elsewhere, they can be seen as auspicious experiences with those going through them being treated with tender care. The blue beings are thought to be activating beings with great potential for healing and upgrading our cellular structures. They appear in moments of extreme awakening, activating a physical Kundalini awakening and deep cellular and DNA healing. Feel that. 
Many people glamorize the awakening process. However, in reality, it's much messier and more difficult than most of us believe. Check. We must first let go of what we think we know for sure and how we make sense of the world. This isn't easy. The awakening process, even when it's spontaneous, takes a considerable amount of time to integrate. An awakening without integration can leave us feeling very ungrounded. If you are in the midst of an awakening, and the process never ends, Treat this time as deeply sacred and give yourself ample space to ground and integrate the extreme changes that you're going through. And you're invited to place this card on your heart and say, I allow myself to surrender to the awakening process that's right for me. I take things slowly and integrate my experience each and every day. So what a beautiful card that really sums up for me the last nine months after a series of awakenings over the last 20 years, I can attest that the last 10 months has been the most profound. Of course, I've shared with you, I believe it's directly correlated to um, just stopping drinking alcohol altogether, like really clearing the body out, allowing space for this light, this information, this connection to the Pleiadians who I never gave a thought about before to really come into my awareness this year. So thank you all for being on this journey. Again, please like, subscribe, join us in Awakening to Channel, and we'll see you tomorrow to keep on co-creating together in these daily transmissions for this very, very potent month of October. Until tomorrow, be well, receive the light, and then shine it back out into the world.